here we are inside of on one photo raw and if you want to follow along with today's tutorial you can download this image there's a link in the description box below i do encourage you however to work on your own photos instead of the images that i'm going to be providing just so that way you can see how this particular technique works with your images because that's what matters the most your photos with that being said we'll go ahead and get started so first thing that you're going to do is open up the image in the edit module and then you are going to come over to brilliance ai we'll click this little radial filter yours may be a different color than blue just based off of the accent color you have set but you can see this has taken the image from looking something that's really dark like this to something that is way more accessible and probably tolerable in many cases and right here is usually just as far as most of the people that I've been working with want to go but you can go so much further because all we've done was we've taken an image that was dark and made it a little bit brighter we are letting the AI make decisions for us now let's say maybe you don't get what you want with the first click on one has given us control over how the Bruins AI works. So the first slider here is the amount slider. Think of this as the 100% opacity slider or 100% application slider. If you pull it down to zero, you get absolutely no effect. This is just the same as the camera uh, with maybe a little bit of uh, highlight or shadow recovery there happening. But if you have it all the way down, it's straight out of camera, essentially. And then when you pull it up, this is on one doing all of the heavy lifting for you. And in this case, also changing the color from something that was a little bit more warm to something that was a little bit more cool. Or in simpler terms, from something that was orange to something that's blue now. So if you pull this back, you can see that this is more of an orange looking color or yellow and then this is blue so in the world of photography we call this a cooler looking image because there's a lot of blue blue is a cooler looking tone and we call this a warmer looking image because there's no blue and there's warmer tones in the image like yellows oranges and reds so with all that being said, I'm going to go ahead and pull this up to 100% and you're probably like, Chris, why would you do that? This looks awful. Well, if you click on the fine tune drop down arrow here, a lot of people miss this. You have two options and essentially photography is broken down into what I like to call two separate categories. You have your tone, which is your contrast, exposure, all that good stuff. And then you have your color. And this is essentially if you want something that's black and white or if you want something that's in color. Now, what On One allows us to do, because we're not going to look under the hood, we're just going to look at these two sliders today. What On One allows us to do is if we pull this up to 100%, we have complete control over the proportions of tone and color that are being applied to our image. So I don't like to work with color right away. So I'm just going to pull the color amount all the way down. And this gets us close to the colors that came straight out of the camera. Now, the reason why they look way different is because we modified the tone. And one of the things with tone is contrast. And when you modify contrast, you saturate colors. All right. So what we're going to do is just pull the tone amount all the way down. And that brings us right back to square one again. But this time, what we can do is just kind of fade this tone amount in. And all I'm looking at here is, do I like what it's doing to the light in the image? And that's the exposure. Photography is about light and you want to control it the best that you can. On One gives us some great tools to control the light without having to understand the nuances or the complicated aspects of it. So maybe somewhere around here looks pretty good. Holding down that backslash key, this is the before and this is the after. I really like what I'm getting here. So now it's time to start working with the color. And I can go ahead and pull up on my color slider here until I get somewhere in the ballpark of what I want to go on. 
Now, I will show you one nuance to making sure the color slider works on your image. So if you are working on your own photo and you're like, Chris, the color slider doesn't work. Why doesn't my color slider work? Well, that's probably because inside of the options section, you have your white balance set to one of these other options down here. So flash, fluorescent, likely it's going to be on as shot. And you see when I hover over as shot, it changes this little warning right here that says auto white balance required. So what that means is you just got to click auto and then guess what? Your color slider is going to work. So that's one way of troubleshooting that problem for your photography. So we're going to go ahead and minimize that. And now we have a good base exposure. And that's where I think many people want to get. And if that's as far as you want it to go, guess what? You've accomplished it. You're good to go. Continue on with your photo editing journey outside of this aspect. But if you want to go a little bit further, stay tuned because that's what we're about to do. So. The next step here is there's this distraction in the background. This is actually a common thing where people are like, hey, how do I remove something from my image because this thing is in the photo and I don't really care for it being there. Well, I'm going to show you how to do it. We'll zoom in just a little bit and we'll pull down over here. We'll come over to the left column and we're going to select the healing brush. And this is really the retouch module but we're going to use the healing brush for today's purposes. If you haven't reset your keyboard shortcuts, you can use the letter Q to activate it. Then we're just going to come over here to our image. Now you can resize your brush using the bracket keys right above the enter or return key on your keyboard. And I always recommend making your brush size just slightly larger, like 25% of the overall subject that you're trying to remove or item that you're trying to remove. And if you're not familiar with how this tool works, don't worry about it. I have a video that shows how you can use this particular tool. Check the link in the description box below, but just know that you want to set your size the right way. And based off of what I show in that video, if that's something that you're interested in, and then I'm just going to paint around the edges first. We'll paint all the way up here and I'm painting a little bit over this column, as you can see, and then I'm just going to fill in the middle here, just like back in elementary school. Then I'm going to let that go. So what on one does is it samples over here to the left, but I can change the sample point to replace those pixels with something that I actually want to see there. So. What I'm going to do is grab this little green box. I'm going to click and drag up and over onto the brick because this image actually had bricks that I could sample. All right. Your image may require something a little bit different. Now, the nuance of working with this tool is remember, we're sampling pixels. So we're essentially copying from one area and pasting into the other because this column has these horizontal or these uh, spiraling lines, we'll call them that, I need to match up those lines with the column. So as I pull this up and down, I'm looking at the area that I'm replacing, like this does not look good. So I need to pull this over until I get the very far right side of the column aligned. And then I need to pull up and down until I get those spirals to align inside of the column, probably somewhere around here. And then I'll let that go. And you can see it has instantly replaced that and the distraction is gone. So now I can go ahead and zoom out. So we'll hit command and zero on our keyboard. And that brings us back out of the image and you can see that thing is gone and I'm happy. So that's another step. You could do the same thing to remove this little distraction up here, but I'm not going to do that today because I think you get the point. Now, 
The next step that I think a lot of people like to do is they want to modify color, but they have literally no idea how to use color theory or how to even manipulate colors. And, you know, I show people this wonderful color enhancer, which is one of my favorite color tools. And they're like, whoa, that's way too much. Don't worry. We're not going to use that today. Instead, what we're going to use is the match color tool. Now, this is new for anyone who's using On One Photo Raw 2025 and beyond at the point of this video being recorded. If you don't have the latest version, then consider picking it up today and you can save some money using my coupon code FREEWOLLPHOTOS20 when you check out. I do make a commission from everyone who uses it, but that's at no extra charge to you and it's a win-win because you support the channel and save some money at the same time. By the way, that coupon works for anything else that you're purchasing over on the On One website. So if that's something you're interested in, then by all means, use that coupon code. With that being said, the way the match color tool works is you will find an image. Now today, we're gonna use an image from Pexels that is popping up on the screen now but you can use any image that you go and find. All you have to do is download it and know where you saved it. Once you've done that, then you can go ahead and click over here where it says references. And because I've already added this particular image into on one, I don't have to hit load file, but if you hadn't, you can click load file. And then once your finder or your explorer window pops up, you'll select your image and then you can click open. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to cancel this out because again, I've already loaded this image. So I'm just going to click on the image. Now, if you want to learn more about using the match color tool, check the link in the description box below. I do have a complete video showing how to use this tool. So today we're not going to go in depth. I'm just going to show you kind of the idea and principles so you can get the most out of using the tool in a short amount of time. With that being said, now that I have my image loaded into the match color tool, I can choose how much of the initial color I want to apply. And this is a great way for anyone who just doesn't want to deal with colors in an image. You can just come over here and you can say, all right, color. Do I want more or less of the color from my reference image? If you want more, just pull it all the way up and you can add more. If you want less, then you can go with less. And you can just mess around with this to your heart's content. The luminosity is just going to say, uh, similar to what we had over here in the Bronze AI with the tone amount and the color amount. What the color and luminosity uh, works with in this particular case is the color of the image. You can blend that with your original and then you can also blend the luminosity values or the uh, exposure values, the brightness and the darkness of this image with this image. Do you want your photo to look more like your reference image, then pull the luminosity slider all the way over to the right. You're going to get it to look more like what's in the reference photo. And if you want it to look more like your photo, but just put a little bit of the reference photos, luminosity values into your image, then pull it over to the left. It's really that simple. You can play with these until you get something that you really, really enjoy. Like this, I would probably not do because it's making my subject look red and I don't want my subject to look red. So I would probably pull this down just a little bit. And I think the reason I selected this image is because I do like the luminance values. So I'm gonna go with that. And I'll probably add in a little bit of saturation and saturation works the same as it always does. If you're not familiar with saturation, it's how much volume do you want in your colors? If you crank it all the way up, you can see what it does. And that brings me to another point. Don't be afraid to pull sliders and on one. If you don't like something, guess what? You can turn it off or you can just hit this X and delete the filter. You're working non-destructively, so just, you know, take a breath and edit images. It's going to be okay. You don't have to worry about messing up your image. The only way that you can mess up your image is if you delete it, because then it is gone. But I digress. 
with that being said i think that this image is ready to go and again this is another stopping point where you could say i have gone from a dark underexposed image with a distraction in it to a more vibrant lively exposed image that i can share on my social media platforms and do all that cool stuff and we didn't have to do anything overly complicated to get to this point you could argue that maybe fixing this part was a little complicated but that is what it is um, the next step that you can do if you want to take it just a tad bit further is you can apply something called a vignette now if you're not new or if you're new to photography and not familiar you can uh, click add filter come over to the third column and the third from the bottom is the vignette filter be careful sometimes people click the vintage filter thinking that that's the one I'm talking about I've done that a number of times thinking that I, I read vignette and I actually clicked vintage but we want the vignette filter and when you click this it doesn't do anything and on one has probably one of the most legendary styles or presets inside of the vignette filter called the big softy this seems to be the one that a lot of people use myself included whenever I use the vignette filter when you click it you can see it just darkens down the corners that's all that a vignette is now this is covering up my subject and I don't really care for that effect on the image so I'm gonna come over here to the little square um, the target symbol we'll call it that when you click this it gives you a crosshair like it'll turn blue and then when you hover over your image you get a little crosshair and what this allows you to do if you click and drag you can move your vignette all over the photo and what I typically like to do is put my subject especially if this is an environmental portrait like this one I like to put my subject right in the center of the vignette so that way my subject isn't impacted but everything else is kind of impacted and you can see what that effect does to the overall image so if I turn this off and turn it back on look at how that just helps make my subject in the middle of the picture pop right out of the frame so very easily we went from something that looks like this to something that is probably ready to be shared and ready to go so if you found value in this video smash the like button if you want to learn how to use on one photo raw you can keep watching videos here on youtube or you can sign up for a one-on-one -on -one coaching call with me and i'll walk you through the software answer your questions and help you get more familiar with using this tool on your own images if that's something you're interested in check the description box below there's a link to sign up for a coaching call today until next time, I want you guys to stay inspired and keep creating. Peace.